Hi everyone, welcome to mini drawing tutorial number three with me, Prentice Rollins. This tutorial is going to be all about rendering. Rendering means the ways that artists use to convey different surface texture qualities. For example, the way that you draw water is going to be different from the way that you draw wood, sand, cloth, skin, brick. You're going to use different drawing techniques to make these things look real and authentic. And the rendering techniques that you use are limited really only by your imagination. Let's look at a few examples right now. Maybe the best way for me to explain and make clear what I mean by rendering is to just start doing some. So I'm going to start drawing a um, scene from nature, just out of my head, from my imagination. This is a tree trunk. <clears throat> start indicating the crown of the tree up here. Go off the page a little bit, it's okay. I'm using my um, Cintiq tablet and stylus hooked up to my computer for ease of demonstration and speed. If you don't have a tablet and stylus, it's okay. If you want to follow along, just use <coughs> pencil and paper, which is what I prefer to use myself anyway. Most of my stuff I do use paper and ink, but the computer has some advantages. Okay. I think I'm going to put some boulders, big rocks down here. This is going to be a picture with a number of different types of uh, surface qualities and textures that we can render in different ways. I want this tree to be kind of beside a pond or a body of water, a lake or something. So that's this line indicates um, the, the water. And we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> now I'm going to put some hills. back behind the tree. Nice lovely rolling hills. And I'm going to put a tree line back here to make it look like there's woods off in the distance. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to start to add a little bit of detail to this tree. Select a smaller pen. And now I'm going to start to indicate and render these leaves. Putting a couple of little branches there showing through. But I'm just making these recurring squiggly line patterns and I'm only doing it on the bottom of the crown section of the tree and the reason I'm doing that is because the light is coming from above. This is daytime, the sun is in the sky so this is being lit from above and I want to help to reinforce that by just rendering the leaves on the down planes of the tree. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I tend to have a pretty detailed style of drawing. For me, um, Drawing is very much a uh, sort of meditative zen activity. 
I can really lose myself in a drawing, putting in details and things, little, little touches. Um, and I personally think that, that all those little touches and details lend um, a drawing a lot of authenticity and realism. And those are two things that I value very much in my artwork, authenticity and realism. I'm going to put some of these lines kind of bowing upwards up here higher. And look at that. This is really starting to look like a pretty convincing tree. Now for the trunk of the tree, watch this. I'm just going to put some of this kind of uh, iconic wood grain pattern, the sort of pattern that you would see on a tabletop or a wooden door. Okay. And this is uh, these are all little things, little tricks that I learned when I was uh, just over the years of drawing comics. When you're a comic book artist, you have to learn to do these things quickly because <clears throat> you're always under deadlines. For these boulders, I'm putting just these straight lines, but only on the side plane. I'm leaving the, the top planes unrendered, which helps to indicate, again, that the light is coming from above. Now I'm going to put in <clears throat> some more foliage and grass on the ground. For grass, I'm just putting these repeating bunches of sort of tick marks. You don't want to put them everywhere. Just here and there, scatter them around. And your viewer's imagination supplies the rest. They see grass. And you want to make them smaller as they're receding into the distance. Okay, because that helps to um, create the sense of space, receding distance, dimensionality. And on the uh, shore of this body of water, I'm going to put some actual plants, just these simple <clears throat> spiky shapes, might put a couple of cattails, that's what we call them, um, not sure what they're actually called, they're, they're those plants with the brown tail-like things on the end that you see near bodies of water. more grass. Now for the uh, shore, I want to create the sense of soil or sand. So I'm just going to put some circles here and there, little tick marks, some squiggly lines, just these little organic elements kind of scattered randomly and uh, it kind of looks like little pebbles on the shore good quick way of rendering ground without any grass on it let's take a look They're pretty good <clears throat> fill in this area a little bit to make it look darker. Now for these trees in the background, watch what I do here. I'm just going to scribble in here beneath this line. This is going to create I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but let's just give it a shot. Um, 
Rendering is all about experimentation. It's just about thinking of new and interesting ways to, uh, to represent and convey qualities. And as I said before, the only limit to your rendering styles is your own imagination. <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm just scribbling. I'm literally just putting these scribble marks. And if we back up and take a look, you know, it kind of, <clears throat> I can add a little area of it here. Continue it right here. Very relaxing. Okay. Now for the water, there's um, there's a few ways you can do it. I'm going to show you one right now. Um, I'm just going to put down these sort of iconic water shapes. These but it's sort of like the grass. You don't put them everywhere. You scatter them around, just here and there. Make them get smaller as they recede into the distance to reinforce space. A little bit bigger, closer to the viewer. <clears throat> and instant water. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some clouds in the sky. And I'm going to show you a quick and foolproof way to represent and render clouds. You see what I did there? They're kind of poofy, cottony up top then you give them this kind of flattened bottom. Make a smaller one off in the distance. Maybe put one sort of behind this tree. There we go. I mean, so in, in 10 minutes we have created a, a fairly authentic and pleasing kind of uh, country scene with um, a number of different rendering techniques. This wood pattern for the trunk of the tree, these straight lines to indicate uh, sort of a, you know, rock, these squiggly lines to indicate leaves. And remember I left this area mostly empty to indicate that the light is coming from above, which it is. These tick marks recurring in little bunches to indicate grass. These little circles and dots and dashes to indicate sand or soil. Uh, these sort of iconic waveform patterns to indicate water. And this quick and easy way of drawing clouds with the poofy tops and the flattened bottoms. So that's your lightning tour of some, um, some handy rendering techniques. I'd like to show you one other thing before we finish this tutorial. This is um, an image I created for a book on drawing a number of years ago. It's the same young lady uh, drawn with six uh, rendering techniques. In this uh, first image, she's done with um, crosshatching which is a rendering method that I'm very fond of. It's these intersecting and overlapping lines being used to create this very pleasing, um, lovely effect. Uh, it's time consuming, but you, uh, you get a really nice effect in the end, so I think it's worth it. Uh, this is pointillism. The light source is coming from below, 
That's why she's uh, lit in this kind of uh, scary, sinister way. But I've rendered her with lots and lots of little dots, as you can see. Um, also rather time-consuming, but very relaxing if you can really get into it and uh, enjoy yourself. And you get this very impressive effect. This is a high contrast rendering style. A very strong light source coming from this direction. And the areas of the young lady's face that are in shadow are in total blackness. It's actually a very minimal rendering style. It's just all about light and shadow. Um, this is a backlit image. There's a strong light source behind the character, and so most of her face is obscured in darkness, and she's only lit on the outside planes. <coughs> uh, this is ink wash, meaning I um, did this shading and um, the shadow effects using a brush and diluted India ink on paper. Gives you a very sort of uh, lovely painterly effect. And this last image was done with charcoal. So you can render using different drawing techniques and also with different media. Ink, pencil, paint, charcoal, etc. Thank you everyone for, for your attention. I very much enjoyed talking to you today about rendering. I hope you've gotten something out of it. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.